Good evening, bright stars of Bethlehem family. I am Reverend Dr. Iva Carruthers, the General Secretary of the Samuel DeWitt Proctor Conference and proud board member of Bright Stars of Bethlehem. And I am honored to introduce our most revered visionary for such a time as this. You know, the older you get, you no longer measure moments by chronological time, but rather by divine purposeful meaning. And so when you ask how long I've known Mitri, our dear Reverend Mitri, I've known him as a brother of a lifetime. He has shown us all that it's one thing to preach a sermon, it's another thing to be a sermon. It's one thing to teach a few, it's another to build an institution for the many. It's one thing to survive a shutdown and a shutout, but it's another thing to speak across all manner of boundaries. So in the spirit of Ubuntu, we are because he is, and because of his witness, we have come to know what it means to be a Palestinian Christian, we have seen the Bible through the eyes of a Palestinian. We have hope unlocked by faith, even in the face of empire and under occupation and COVID-19. This is just a few of the titles that embody the spirit of our revered Reverend Dr. Mitri penned in his 40 books. So please notice that I stand in front of my ministry butterfly quilt to remind us all that at the intersection of hope and despair, life and death, there is the unleashing, renewing, and resurrecting power of God. And in our midst this evening, there is one among us who we all know as author, pastor, friend, but most of all, God's agent of peace, justice, and transformation. So let us all breathe in the power of God's protection and let us exhale the embrace of God's love as we welcome into this virtual space our beloved Reverend Dr. Mitri Rahel. Dear sisters and brothers, uh, greeting from uh, the little town of Bethlehem. It's so good to be again with you. It has been a long time since we saw each other in person, uh, but I'm grateful that at least we have this possibility uh, to be together uh, this year virtually and in so many places in watch parties. Your presence with us tonight means the world to me. You know, unfortunately, no good news are still coming out from the Middle East. Our region seems to be in turmoil again. I think you witnessed the blast in Beirut. You know, it was like uh, almost Hiroshima, what we saw there. The devastation of the port, of the neighborhoods, of the art galleries, and the death of so many people. And then we had all the problems in Jerusalem where Jewish settlers were trying to take over the homes of Palestinians who have been living there for decades. I think you followed the Sheikh Jarrah uh, events in Jerusalem and our students were caught in there. Some of them were injured like Anas who was on his way to Al-Aqsa Mosque to pray and where he was detained, jailed and wounded to some extent. And then came Gaza, you know, that aggression on Gaza, uh, the war on the people there. 256 people killed and 66 children as well. If you look at all of these images, it's so easy to lose hope. It's so easy to get depressed. It's so easy to give up. But, and this is where I believe God is calling us to be here 
in this region, here in Palestine, and now, at this difficult time, to be that beacon of hope and to keep hope alive in the same place where hope was born 2,000 years ago. For us, the question, what to do when hope seems to be lost? And our slogan as Bright Stars of Bethlehem is, hope is what we do. It's really what we do that is what is bringing hope to this region and to the people in this region. And so immediately after we heard of the blast in, Be in Beirut, in Lebanon, we thought we as Palestinians who have been going through all of these difficulties throughout all of these years, we have uh, built up some expertise how to deal with situation like this. And so we wanted to reach out to the people in Beirut and in Lebanon. And we really tailored a program to bring healing and hope through the arts. And so we worked with 132 artists in Beirut by setting up a website where they can sell their products and have some income. But also to work with artists in Beirut uh, through uh, art therapy and to reach out to the many nurses in four hospitals that were destroyed during the blast so that they feel the hope, they feel the healing, and they can pass this healing on to the others around them in the hospital. That was a great success. And I'm so glad that we were able, as Palestinians, to reach out to the people in Lebanon. And again, hope is what we do, and this is what our students are doing. Again, thinking of Anas, who was detained, injured during the Sheikh Jarrah problem. What he did was to write a song. By writing a song, that was the way he felt healing. But sharing that song about what Jerusalem means for him as a Palestinian, as a young man. You know, that city of hope where the hope came out of the tomb, that is what Anas wanted actually to share through his song. And we are so proud of him. And finally, Gaza. You know, the blasts in Gaza, the destruction that was done, unbelievable. Just the sound of all of these high-rises collapsing set many children in fear. They couldn't sleep anymore. Uh, they were having nightmares. And so how to reach to those? And again, our students in Gaza that we trained in the last two years, we were able to start working with children through art therapy, through games, so that these kids can sleep again, so that they can dream again, so that they can sing again, so that they can go to school again. I'm so proud of our students in Gaza and the way they were able to reach within days after the end of that aggression to reach out to the many kids in Gaza. You know, Gaza is the most densely populated area in the whole world. People are packed so close to each other. And so you can imagine the devastation that these kids were feeling. And again, hope where it's so easy to lose hope. That's our mission and that's our vision here in Palestine. Another great example how our students are reaching out uh, to children uh, through the arts is Mira. Mira graduated from Dar al Kalima in 2015. She was a voice major, and now she's using her voice to bring healing to children, not only in her neighborhood, but throughout Palestine. Mira is a good example of graduates who personalize the values and ethos of Dar al-Kalima.
This last year was a very tough year, but our staff were busy bringing hope to the people in Beirut, in Jerusalem, in Gaza, throughout the West Bank, but even beyond. And other staffs were working very hard for the application to be recognized as a university. You know, 2006, we were recognized as a community college offering two-year degree. And 2013, we were upgraded as a university college, one college offering bachelor degree. But a month ago, and this is the great news that I would like to share with you all, we got the accreditation as a full-fledged university. So now we have five colleges. We have a college for art, we have a college for design, we have a college for arts management, we have the community college still, and we have the graduate college. Five colleges, and from now on, we can actually offer master degrees and hopefully down the road, PhDs. I mean, what an immense change this will mean to us. So you can imagine the, the thrill and the celebration that our staff were having in those last days. Uh, and at the same time, restructuring, getting ready for the new semester that just started. As part of the restructuring, uh, we had to double the number of vice presidents. We had uh, before two vice presidents only, and now we have five vice presidents. And guess what? 80% of the vice presidents are women. The poor man is in the minority 20%. But this is exactly uh, what Dar el Kalima stands for, gender justice equality, uh, woman empowerment. And it was exactly out of this reason that last year we launched the Women of Vision Scholarship. You remember Carla, that young student in the interior design who won the Women of Vision Award and Scholarship. This year it's Haya. She is majoring in film. Haya finished a community college with us two years and then she was so good that she applied for the bachelor and now she's enrolled in the bachelor program. Haya actually in Arabic means life. And this is what Darul Kalima stands for. We stand for a culture of life in a context, unfortunately, still marked by a culture of death. And so, it's that, that life, that spring in that context of death. This is our mission and this is our vision. This is what Jerusalem stands for. It's this resilience of our people that do not give up hope, uh, but continue in spite of everything. This last year, I was busy with finishing my latest book, The Politics of Persecution. Middle Eastern Christian in the Age of Empire. This is a book that talks about the story and history of the Christians in the region, in Lebanon, in Egypt, in Iraq, in Jordan, and in Palestine. And this story is not necessarily a story of persecution, though hardship, but it's really a story of resilience. It's the Christians continuing this message that came out of Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. It's this message of bringing hope into a region that is marked by uncertainty. I encourage you to read this book. If you want to understand what's happening today in the Middle East, if you care about the Christians of the region, this is the book that you need to read now. I hope you will enjoy it. And if you have any feedback, please share it with me. It's sometimes when we feel that the journey is long, that the road is so difficult and so thrown It's exactly in this context that we feel the power of the spirit that we can continue not only the journey, but bring this message to unlock hope. Saleh is a great example of this hope. 
a young man from Hebron who came and is passionate about filmmaking because he believes it's through the film that he can spread hope in this context of hopelessness. Listen to his inspiring story. When I was young, I used to see the movies, the films, that I used to see the big cameras move. Directors come and ask for materials, ask for cooperation. So I used to see many directors when I was young. Dark cameras started the film school and I found this out. And I went with my father. He said, I want to come with you. I want to see this place. And we were surprised, you know, because we can see the spirit of the art there. The most special thing about Dar al is that they educate you about yourself first. They teach you about yourself, about the, about the real Palestine. place that we live in, always every hour you need a home. It's the only word we still have because the Israeli cannot take it. Saleh actually is a good example of what Dar al Kalima stands for, transforming the lives of young people, training the next generation of creative leaders in Palestine. Imagine a young man from Hebron living almost in a big prison to become assistant director for a film that is uh, nominated for the Academy Award. It's exactly that transformation what we do in Palestine. And this is really the hope that we are talking about. It's very real. It's not a theory. We see that when we touch the lives of one person at a time, one young Palestinian at a time, through music, through filmmaking, through art, through design. You can become a world changer. Your support to Bright Stars can help people like Saleh and like Mira, Haya, and like Anas to become those peacemakers Tonight, you have this opportunity to unlock hope, where hope was first born, to touch the lives of people that otherwise might lose sight. But through your gift, they will be encouraged to be resilient, to continue the journey, to bring good news out of Palestine, to be the hope of a nation and to be those peacemakers that hopefully one day they will bring peace to where the angels 2000 years ago sang glory to God in the highest peace on earth, goodwill to the people. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your encouragement and thank you for assisting us in bringing hope to Palestine.